Hey everybody, just a quick message from Bald and Bonkers Network. We would like to remind everybody that certain topics of discussion may not be comfortable for all listeners. Certain viewpoints may not reflect those of our partners, sponsors, affiliates, our hosts, or that of our guests. We would like to encourage everybody to keep a respectful and open climate of discussion for all topics, no matter how disturbing they may be. So viewer discretion is advised. This world has gone insane. It is absolutely no secret. But tonight, Saturday night, you are about to experience the true measures of what that insanity can bring you. Tonight, you are about to see Ball and Bonkers, the one of a kind show that delves deep into the world with no hands on. Now, Meet your hosts, Dakota Franson, Specialist of the Strange, and Crystal Mule, the UFO fanatic. Now, give it up, and let's see what these two idiots can bring you. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> what, what? Ladies and gentlemen, I was late to announce I'm looking for a new co host. Anybody <laughs> that wants the job, you know, I, he, he's, I'm getting a replacement. Change that back. He can, I can reach all me. Right, all right. Well, so, are... ladies and gentlemen, we were meant to have a guest tonight and he never turned up. Don't take Christina, just put Chris. It means I need to move my bike. At my bike, my mic arm, you know, it reached the, the keyboard. All right, you know, all right. See, don't see that when people don't turn punch. up. Do you, do you not find that very annoying when people don't turn up? Uh, he did mention that he did have a wedding he was attending, so uh, that's no Would excuse. Nice. I know, I know. You make a commitment, you try to make it through, or at least cancel in advance. To be honest, uh, just well, you know what? You know, Life happens. No worries. That's, There's plenty of weird true. stuff been going on in the world lately, so we we have we two we idiots have get, from Blanc is fine. We yeah, we we've got quite a lot to talk about tonight. Anyway, we've, it's not as if we've we've not got anything to talk about. I mean, Dakota's in his new abode. Look at him; he's sitting there. He's all handsome and a lovely different background. You know, I'm just saying that for you, and just in case there's some ladies out there, you know. I <laughs> just ignored me. I went mad, ladies and gentlemen. What? I don't know if you want to be saying too much about the ladies that come here. Anyway. Well, I don't know. But, ladies, anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you all have a fantastic weekend. Um, We were looking forward to our interview tonight, but we obviously didn't turn up. Yeah. We have a brilliant show lined up tomorrow. We have Moonblade coming on, don't we? Yes, we have someone who has been given high praise from our dear friend Lisa Fry. So we've heard so much about him. He seems like a cool guy. Tomorrow we're going to put that to the test and see what all sorts of insanity comes about. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I, I think there'll be some insanity tomorrow night. I mean, there's some insanity right now. So what's the first mad thing that's going on in the world right now dakota what's the oh. mad crazy thing do you want to talk about Loch Ness first oh Loch Ness. that's okay yeah, but did you hear about <clears throat> the latest big Loch Ness news no okay i should clarify there's been a couple of things since this one came about mm -hmm. but you got to remember right i know for a fact i'm scottish you can probably tell ladies and gentlemen yes i'm I'm Scottish. I've been to Loch Ness and I have seen the tourists there. All the Americans with their brightly coloured shirts on and their cameras around their necks and stuff like that wanting to see Nessie. Right. Oh, yeah. I've been there and I have seen it right, first hand. And you know what people are like when they see something out in the loch. In the loch. When, they, when they're out there you think, what could that be? Could it be a man on a rowing boat? No, it's Nessie! You know, you're doing a bit of freezing there. Is that new kind of like Michael Jackson kind of like dancing? <clears throat> I, I was freezing up there for a second, but 
Well, that's that's yeah. the CIA. They're they're they're, they're uh, tapping into your communication, man. You know, they want to see what us guys are talking about. Uh, but anyway, when you go to Dakota, I was just telling everybody uh, what American tourists. Uh, I know, I know. And, yeah, raving mm. on about the idiot tourists, and you know, thanks, well, thanks for that asshole. I know. You're, you're welcome. You're welcome. Because as some of you who may know, and I've noticed we got a few new people that have been popping in. <clears throat> I am actually listed in the Loch Ness registry for my yes. own site when I went there for vacation. Very fun time. Uh, did end up doing a brief appearance on National Geographic because of it. So all of, because of that, yeah. Scotland gets counted as my favorite trip. But you see. it does. There's been a couple bits of news that's come about. First, being the discovery the discovery of a new type of pleosaur mm-hmm. that automatically mm. people are assuming to be related to Nessie. Well, it might be a, it might be a relation off its holiday well, somewhere, well, and they might have maybe, seen it somewhere maybe, else. Maybe, maybe, you know, maybe, you know, the pleosaurs over thousands and thousands of years lost that big chunky body and just became nothing but that long neck and became eels. Yeah. But anyway... Unfortunately, the map, the geological maps don't exactly line up for the pleosaur to somehow snuck into Loch Ness. Mm-hmm. By the time the pleosaur was, is believed to be alive, Loch Ness was nothing but a big ice cube. Yes, it was. It had a lot of ice above it. That's how. That's what. See, a lot of people don't realize that's how Scotland got all its lochs, mm-hmm. and all its mountains, glaciers, ice age. When it's when the the a lot of the deepest lochs in Scotland are actually caused by glaciers carving out the ground, retreating. And if you if you ever if you ever noticed in Scotland, you'll find that when you dig down a certain depth, you'll find a lot of very small stones. Right, mm-hmm. this is quite interesting. And these little stones are actually left from the ice age because there would be a big stone and the ice would grind it up and polish it into small little round rocks and that's how they became about it's kind of a, a, a subject at the school i liked actually but that's how a lot of the deepest lochs in scotland became fresh water lochs because a lot of them are like some of them are sea some of them have got like salt water in them because they're close to the sea but a lot of them are fresh water lochs but they're very deep, very, very deep. So there you go. Very true. Very true. But now, here's the bit I wanted to talk about. Wow. It kind of goes into Chris's little remarks earlier about idiot tourists not knowing what the hell they're talking about. This was a image taken from an article on the mirror. Now, I would like to see what the chat would think about this. Kind of an interesting shot, right there on the beaches. That hey, it's when the look, the look. Remember when you're saying look? I don't admit the, the next of it kind of does look like the uh, sturgeon photo. I, 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 the little black I, and white one where you see just a little what looks like right. an elephant trunk sticking out. I d- I will admit to you, it does look like Nessie. Right, I will admit to you, all the postcards I've ever seen, it does look, give that kind of aspect to it. I can, though, tell it's quite close to shore, so it is quite shallow. Right. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I know what it is, because I know the story. But people in the chat, what's your opinion on this picture? <clears throat> I'm Don't be shy. I'm not, I'm not, it's a real photo. It's a real it photo. Real. Mm-hmm. But um, this is why... But this is, I'm going to say this, this is why people really need to be careful and not jump to conclusions when it deals with anything under the supernatural umbrella. Yes. So, any theories on what this may be, ladies and gents? Come on, ladies and gents in the chat, Facebook, welcome Facebook listeners, welcome come on. YouTube listeners, come everybody, on. come on. What do you think this is in Loch Ness? I'll give you a clue. It is living. It is a creature of some kind. But what is it? What strange creature creeps in the loch? Remember, see, when you're saying loch, as if you're bringing up flame, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Nobody's going to take a shot. 
Come on, don't be shy. Come, come on, come on. Uh, Sherry says Nessie. Sherry PWS, Nessie. but oh, it's no Nessie, right? What oh, is it? Come on, Sherry. it's a creature. Sherry, oh, come on. Oh, it's come a on. creature. It's a real creature. It's a, it's a real creature, and you can see there's quite a few of them about, but you oh, have to oh, go oh. to... Oh, oh. A boat oh, by oh. the... Vi- a boat by it's the Vikings. Deer. It's a little exotic there. A little, a little exotic. exotic. I'll give you that one. All right, all right. All right, now we now we got some people stepping up. All right, all right. right. Dobie well, sock. Think... She says it's a deer. Well, I, she's very close. Oh, very close. Look who decided to just show up. Very close, mate. I felt it. He's yeah, it look like just showing up. Well, here's the guess that he we thought was a no show. No, I had a yard sale and had a wedding and just kind of been rushing and rushing and rushing. Oh man. <laughs> And now I'm outside grilling, so I'm here though. All right. Well, we're starting to sh- we kind of started to go without you, brother. I apologize, guys. Like I said, man. Ah, no problem. No problem. Uh, yeah, well, actually, I tell you what, uh, Nat, Nate, what do you think this picture is? It was in Loch Ness. Show, show him the picture and tell him what do you think this uh, is. Because. Because we're on the subject, know, we'll have... Nathan yeah. through TikTok, and he's real big about going in and debunking photos and videos and things like that. So maybe you've seen a little something about this. This was out of Scotland. Re- recent alleged Nessie sighting. What are your thoughts on it, brother? That's interesting. So I kind of feel if you look at the mountain in the background, Honestly, say that that's going to be possibly a toy that someone has put in and zoomed in on the toy. It's all about perspective and scope when it comes to photographs like that. You could take something very small and you put it into a bigger area. And if you zoom in just correctly, you can make that object appear 10 times bigger than what it actually is. Well, here. Yes. Well, Chris, would you say that if I'm not mistaken, with a lot of the shorelines in Loch Ness, if I remember correctly, our tour guide explained That's... basically be careful if you go swimming because it, it may seem shallow for a certain point, but then it you get like... to a certain point, like yeah. say, I think it was like 10 feet we'll out, look... it just drops. Well, I... well, Loch Ness, it's in different parts, but there is parts of Loch Ness where you could walk out maybe six or seven feet and then it will drop about 200 feet. Nobody. Yeah. So. So there's uh, Samantha yeah, back. Samantha and and she says, Photoshop. It's no a Photoshop. It's Thank actually a real about. creature, but what is it? Oh, my son wants to say hi. Hey. Hi. What's Hello. up, little dude? Hello, little guy. Yeah, so, sorry about that. Uh, coming and ask me who am I talking to. But but yeah, I um I do know that Loch Ness, you know, that has a habit of being certain spots that just drop. And it's... It's yeah. very deep. It's a very deep lake. Its visibility is not that great, from my understanding, when you're under the water. Mm-hmm. So the difficulty of being able to find anything there would, would be, you know, it's going to be hard, but the lake is definitely big enough to support something there. My question would be, uh, what would be, would there be enough food source? Oh, yeah. Very true. It's very, very true. rich in fish, though. But, I mean, the, the rock is very rich in fish. Oh, yeah. I know people that fish there. Which is why a lot of the major theories right now, and this is being supported by somewhat grainy video footage, but there's not much you can do that because of how mm-hmm. much sediment is in that lake, as well as DNA samples that support that Nessie sightings will likely be an eel. And here, Kelly Drew says infrared should be able to spot it. No, the infrared would actually reflect a lot of the sediment and make it. Yeah, you're not. A lot you're worse. not. Gonna be- you're not going to see anything under that water in infrared. No. But no. this is actually a funny story. Everywhere. Oh, yeah. It's actually it's, it's actually quite a funny story, this. Dakota, because when you go. Scotland has been dealing with a bit of a heat wave. Oh, yeah. yeah I'm going to go ahead and post the article in the chat now. This was, this photo was from a pack of alpacas was alpacas that decided to break free <laughs> and go swimming. You know what? Yeah. That would make sense. But, but it... No, that's what it is. That's... No, that is what it is. You see the alpaca walking out of the water. 
I'm just going to be honest with you. I know that they, I know that they come in darker colors. I've never seen an alpaca that color before. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There is an al. I looked it up really quickly when you were done. There is an alpaca farm right next to Loch Ness. There is. <laughs> And apparently they were getting hot and decided to go swimming. Can't say yeah. I blame them. You know yeah. what? I don't blame them. I would have went swimming today if I had a pool. Trust me. Should we do that? I would that? have went swimming today. I mean, it's 40 Celsius here. 92 <laughs> degrees out. Like 92 degrees Fahrenheit. It, it absolutely sucked. Yeah. It, that, it was warmer. It was actually, I think it was 40 Celsius in, at Loch Ness when that was took. I don't know what that is in American. That's almost 100 degrees. Yeah. It's, it's roughly 100, about degrees. Yeah. So, that, that's, so you think about how warm that is. I mean, that's... And they're covered in wool. <laughs> yeah, I would have went for a swim, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. There's a lot doesn't it? Stay, like, 30 degrees Celsius all year round? Well, Scotland, it's... it's the water Scotland, itself, this, is ve this is very unusual for Scotland, this weather. Let's put it that way. This is very unusual weather. We shouldn't have gone. Yeah, anything except weather. constant rain is weird weather to you I know. people. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I mean, we've actually got a few other pictures there. Uh, Nate, would you like to see them? Absolutely. Push your thoughts on, the, on this UFO picture that was took. Do you want, uh, do you want to bring it up? Yeah, I'll bring it up. Yeah, should we bring up the... Uh, well, yeah, let's bring this one up. The infamous uh, Caroline photo that's been hitting the headlines lately. I'm going to be honest with you, Nat. I'm on my podcast. I'm going right back out. Just grab your drink. But, yeah, I can honestly say I've not seen that photo before. Really? So what is this? Know it. A UFO it's of some type? Yeah. supposed to be some sort of some aircraft that was taken back in 1990, if I'm not mistaken. It was actually... Caught in Scotland, wasn't it, Chris? Yeah, it was caught. It was caught up in the Highlands of Scotland. See, this is this is where a lot of people, right? A lot of people are saying that is it an island and is that a reflection of an aircraft or a boat in the water? But it's very, very calm, very calm in Scotland's. The seas around Scotland don't get calm like that. You need to be extremely lucky, right? It's, um... I mean, yeah, that's interesting. I, the, the black and white pictures there, the original pictures, let's see if we can find that. Is uh, Where is that, Dakota? So is that, my, that is the original black and be, white one. My curiosity here would be slightly below that to the right. Is that a, what well, looks like a fish or is that an airplane? It's made Allegedly to be a higher jump jet. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. Scale it's, made, yeah, it's difficult to tell because you really don't have any kind of landscape to base that off of. Yeah, that's been the kind of the debate, real. See, that, that's I mean, the problem. Given just the picture as a whole from <clears throat> face value, that definitely looks like an object that is bigger than what what is behind it. Yes. But without without having any form of trees or anything like that for scaling, it's really difficult to make a size assessment. See, that's that's the problem. I mean, I could right. This is this is what this is what I think, right? And. I, I've seen things like this. There's you got Loch Lomond up here in Scotland, which is Goat Islands exactly the same as that, right? And I've seen that. I've seen the water like mirror perfect, right? Now, I'm wondering. I'm wondering maybe there was a plane flying over, right? And that was the island, and that was the reflection for the water. You know what? Considering how still you're saying that the water is there, that 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 is very possible. Especially if it was a nice clear day. But then it makes you wonder, then it makes you wonder, is it as big as you think it is as big? Is it maybe smaller than what it actually is? True. And it's just been zoomed up on. So in mm -hmm. theory, it could be the size of a small car. But in theory, you see where I'm trying to go here? It's, I mean, there's actually, there's a there's a image that people have actually put... Like here's an image here where people have actually put holes in the background, right? So it's this is computer generated, obviously, and this is what they think it it looks like, right? Right. But here is a a photo 
where it's obviously the contrast and the color and everything's been taken out of it. You can clearly see that that is a jet of some kind. It's yeah, yeah. They that, say that, it's that, a Harrier jump jet, sure. which would be perfect for round about the time because in the early nineties, Scotland was famous for the Harrier jump jets practicing, right? That is where they trained. But I will say this: Harrier jump jets always practice in glens and over lochs, right? Which makes me wonder: is that an island? Okay, buddy, go get your grasshopper. Sorry, my son was talking to me. But no, it, it definitely would make sense if they practiced that much over the locks and lakes that that could very possibly be a reflection. Yeah. It's, what's that up at the top, Dakota? I see at the very top of it, there's like a mark on. on the... No, that picture. is actually... You see that? Part of the, this is actually, image is actually cropped out. That is actually some leaves from a uh, burnt tree that looks like it's hanging over the actual photo photographer trying to get the photo up now but it is not it is not wanting to let me for some odd reason send uh, it to me in yeah. the through thing Facebook I and I'll put it up. Yeah. Uh, near the center of the top left there was something just barely coming in the screen but we couldn't really tell what it was or I couldn't anyways I mean, you can see it just above the ship to the, to the right, left, just, whatever right. it is. Yeah. It's. All right, let's see if that'll work. All right. <clears throat> so this gentleman is Ooh. retired Air Force officer Craig Lindsay with a copy of one of the original pictures taken. Taken. Now, allegedly, this photo was actually not supposed to be released due to alleged privacy concerns for about another 30 years. Right, I'm going to do a quick Photoshop hang here. That's interesting. So, yeah. It's quite interesting so, that, I mean, that's... Is that is that a fence at the bottom? Is that what that is? Hey. It's like a barbed wire fence. No, I wanted you to tie that. Let's have a look. That's interesting. Is there barbed wire fences around the lock? I'm gonna be honest with you. I know I, I know about lock, but I I, I don't know the area because I've never been. Uh, I don't know where this was took in Scotland. That's the problem. It may have been okay. took near the, that. That is the problem. So if it was took in the Highlands, it could be anywhere. That's the problem. Okay. It was okay. meant to be the Highlands somewhere. I'm just going to send this to you, Dakota. I've just done a quick um, Photoshop thing here. See if you can upload that for me. I've not got my phone connected to my laptop, so I can't do it now. See if you can put that up. Hold on. That's quite interesting, that is. Because I've zoomed right. I've, I've zoomed the image right up. For people to see it. Wait, I think I saw something. Here, Chris, I mean, being the local Scotsman, you're going to probably recognize this a little better than us Americans. Ooh, right, right. That's the. Right, that's the top here. Yeah, that's yeah, like, what's right. the top here is Alvine, where this photo was taken. Right, that's, that's near uh, Dundee. That's near Dundee. You've got to the right hand side of the map is Dundee. Um that's that's just outside Oban. I would say right that Dundee. Well what's the name of that loch? It's got a name. Wait, I'll get the name for you right now. I can't remember that is. Just let me just give me two secs. You got my Google Maps. See, Dobby, yeah, that's actually, Dobby makes a good point here. If you look from the fence line, it looks like if it's a small island and it's a reflection, that's kind of the big debate. And one of the little theories getting tossed around right now is that the alleged aircraft chasing it is actually a person in a rowboat. You know, I can almost see that. Yeah, no, there's even that little discoloration right there where you, towards the bottom you see... Yeah, you can see what would look like itself. a door. 
then the, towards yeah. the top you see what looks what you would expect human skin to look like. Can you bring photos. up the can you bring up the one with the map again, please? Just so I can pinpoint this. Calvin. Right, so that's you've got Dundee. The the the, end, the bit with the blue writing is that's Dundee, the fifth Perth. Um the so loch it's there, between there. the A9 loch. road and the Highland Mainland Railway. Loch Rannach. The, see, the, see the see the long rock at the very top, the very long bit. That's Loch Rannach. So I've got Loch Rannach for you Americans. It's it's I can speak it, but obviously Dobie will know what I'm talking about. She's Scottish. Loch Rannach. Uh, the Bridge of Gore is there. Um yeah, that's exactly see, do you know it's something nowhere near as fun as people think it is see i'll tell you something right that is very popular that area for aircraft training so it could very well be military yeah where's this one here let's go back to this one i sent you this is quite interesting what's your thoughts on this ladies and gentlemen didn't exactly come through at the best quality and we lost nate that's the that's the CIA will blame them. Yeah, it doesn't look like he's had some good signal this entire time. That's All that's right. quite interesting. What's your thought on that, Nate? What's your thoughts? I I completely missed that whole section right there because my mic stopped working sort of my cam. Oh but Yeah, unfortunately I don't know what happened there, but I was listening, and then it stopped. The noise stopped, and I was like, what, "What's going on?" Yeah, that actually so happens a lot with us whenever yeah. we talk about UFOs. That's weird. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. It's 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 the it's it's our, it's our lovely governments of the world that don't like certain things getting talked about. Yeah, because yeah. I had I was having no issues with Mike. I was having no issues with Cam until you started to do some kind of breakdown there, and then just everything froze on me. Yeah. My screens just went all weird. That's that's crazy. Well, like that I is. said, this photo I mean, is I could not supposed either. to leave for another thirty years. Yeah. Hmm. Oh, Did we lose again. Hey, Mike, the naked Bigfoot. Good to see you, my friend, in the chat. All right. Looks like we got him back. Maybe. Yeah. I don't. Yeah. You guys, you guys disappeared on me too. I don't know what happened there. Yeah, it's because we're talking about it's because we're, it's because we're talking about UFOs. I tell you what, let's go off the UFO subject. <laughs> so, so Nate, tell us, how did you get into this this subject of the paranormal and supernatural? So, I had always had an interest from a young age. One of the first books that I ever checked out in middle school was a book called Thirteen Alabama Ghost and Jeffrey. And, uh, mm -hmm. I actually reading the whole series. I've always had an interest. However, uh, when I was about seventeen. I had an incident in my house where something was bothering me whenever I tried to go to bed. I would hear scratching on my bed, tugging on my blankets. I would close the closet door. I'd wake up and the closet door would be wide open. Uh, I would hear dogs barking, although my dog had already passed several months before this. So it, it was really, really strange occurrences. And uh, what got me into actually investigating was I was at this time married and we were living in a small town called Clayhatchie. And... I mm -hmm. fell asleep one night. I used to work night shift. I I get home at about two a.m. and I fell asleep. And I woke up to this feeling of not being able to move. You know, other people refer to it as sleep paralysis. Um, yeah. yeah. My my typical encounter would be what's called an old hag attack, where I woke up and there was a figure standing over me. I couldn't breathe. I couldn't move. And by the time I was finally able to shake it off, the figure went from me to the foot of the bed and then drifted backwards down our hallway. The odd, really odd thing about it was when the figure disappeared, the light bulb in the hallway exploded. Ooh. So I don't know if that was really? just disappearing or something. Something occurred that made that explode. And I've never seen that before on any investigation in my 16 years. And I've never encountered anything like it since. That's wow. That is interesting, though. I mean, the light bulb popping. I've never actually ever seen that. I mean, I've seen it in movies and stuff like that, but the light bulb's right. popping. And I, and I and I have seen it in movies before, but I have never personally until then seen it in... 
And what else do you? What else have you experienced in your paranormal life? Have you ex? What so, other kind of thing? I, I have been to a lot of places um, in my sixteen years. I have been to the slot furnaces in Birmingham. Uh, right. I have been to the St. Augustine Lighthouse in St. Augustine, uh, right. Fort Kansas, the Castillo de San Marcos, which is the oldest Spanish American fort in the United States. Mm-hmm. Absolutely loved that place. I've been to the Lizzie Borden bed and breakfast where the Lizzie Borden murders happened. <laughs> right. And amazing, amazing places. However, the most famous place that I've been to didn't even give me my best experience. My best experience came from a place that no one even knows about. It's a local place in Alabama in a town called Elba. It's a really small town. If you were driving your car and you blinked, you drove right through the town and didn't even know it was there. It's so small. So they have an old, I guess you could call it city jail. It wasn't really a county jail, but it held 89 people in a bullpen style setup. So in 1974, Sheriff Neil Grantham released a prisoner and that prisoner in turn came back the following day and shot him to death on the front step. Wow. Right. There was an inmate smoking a cigarette. He fell asleep and he ended up taking fire and burning to death in his bunk. We right, went. That's, that's kind of traffic. Mm. We went to the place off of the uh, assessment from the Chamber of Commerce and the Historical Society for the town. They wanted us to come in and check it out because they're running a actual haunted attraction there. And this haunted attraction, the people were claiming that they were seeing actors that weren't actors because they weren't even there. Oh yeah. They would see them walk down the hallway. They would disappear and such. So we went in. There was one solitary confinement. Oh, stop, Jameson. Sorry, guys. There is one solitary confinement cell in the whole facility. It took four of us to open a crowbar and about two cans of WD-40 because mm-hmm. it hadn't opened. <laughs> the stuff had shut. Yeah. By the time we started to open, and I went in there doing some audio work, I was in there maybe 20 minutes, and the cell door that had just taken all of us to open slammed shut by itself, and I was stuck in there for over an hour. Oh dear God! Oh, bitch! That, that somebody wanted that, to keep you. The odd thing about that was, was I left my recorder and all that stuff running the whole time. We had a camera on that door. The camera stopped right, right before the cell door shut, and my audio recorder lost all of its batteries, so I couldn't even record while I was in there. <laughs> oh that. my God! That's a location for you to go. I have to take you in and lock you in the cell. You know? Oh. It's- why am I if the Aaron good one of the group? My God. If I still live in that area, I, I will go back again in a heartbeat. But unfortunately, I don't live in that area anymore. That's down in Alabama. I, I now reside in New Hampshire. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's completely the opposite side of the seaboard. So what other type of experiences have you? I take it this, this is a ghost hunting team you've got. What's the name of the ghost uh, hunting team? So, so I have two of them, actually. I have the Southeastern Ghost right. Research association in alabama which is a more of a team that does consults now we don't actually do investigations because i no longer reside in that area but i do yeah. have people that will listen to other people's problems and we do referrals teams in the area that i trust that would take it over and handle it correctly because we typically right. deal with residential cases we don't like we don't necessarily do big famous locations we do them on occasion for fun but our main serious yeah. thing is we do residential stuff Mm-hmm. And up here in New Hampshire, I have the Newport Paranormal Society. Right. Can you tell us a little bit about them? What are they like? So, we do pretty much the same thing. You know, we do the residential stuff. But here recently, yeah. I've, I've cut the team back. I don't accept members outside of the family. So right now, it's a family run. Which yeah. actually makes it a little bit easier for us because... The more people you have, the more plausibility you have of contaminating any kind of evidence you may catch. So the smaller smaller the team, in all honesty, the more accurate your evidence is going to be because you know where people are. You know what they're doing. And it it makes it 10 times easier to sit down and you go through audio and you catch a voice. You're like, yeah, I know these people's voices. That's none of them. So can you, what can a paranormal entities have you caught on tape or? caught in picture what what can a paranormal so, entity be there's there's a weird occurrence i don't know if you've ever heard of it or not but it's called cemetery they're very similar to i guess you would, what people call what or photographs the only difference between or yeah. photographs and cemetery lights is i actually believe cemetery lights exist or photographs oh, yeah. are two 
too easy to explain if you know what you're looking for. Yeah. So cemetery lights. I've taken pictures of a cemetery that's completely dark, no street lights, and saw hundreds of little lights over the top of the cemetery stones. Don't know what causes really? it. That's, Go ahead. That's very interesting. That's very interesting that. Yeah, that's very, very I, I've heard I've heard that. Yeah. And in those in those types of locations, I typically don't use flash because let's face it, the granite of a gravestone can be very reflective. It can cause yeah. all kinds of manner of havoc when you take photographs. Very so when, I, when I'm taking those photographs, I don't use flash. So for these lights to appear above the cemetery is very, very odd to me. Down sorry, I'm it's hot out here. So, <laughs> so uh, another one of my favorite photographs, and I could probably actually send this to you on Twitter or whatever. I have no issue doing that. We were at a cemetery, and I caught an apparition of what looks to be a woman in period dress, kind of halfway. And, and the reason why I say this is most likely a spirit is because it looks like it's half there, half not. It's Ooh, not solid. I wasn't used to stop. I wasn't using slow shutter speed, so it wasn't somebody just walking through frame that happened to be halfway caught. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm. So it's, it's a very interesting photo. And then I've got another photo from a investigation that I did almost six, seven years ago now. And uh, I caught what looks to be a woman in a nurse's uniform, like an old 40 or 50 stuff nurse's yeah. uniform standing in a doorway. That's that is so interesting, isn't it, Dakota? Uh, I mean, that's just. I mean, Dakota, would you like to ask some questions, my friend? Yeah. So, I'm found it through TikTok, and with a lot of your videos, I honestly respect this a lot. And if he hears anything, I think so. It's, it's, on it. So it's kind Where's of weird. When it comes to, as I, as I was saying, I don't know if you heard it or not, but when it comes to video, I've not really caught much on video. I'm, I'm, I'm very um video evidence because find a way. Say you go to it's got a lot of doors. And you're no way. You're putting yourself. He's breaking control. up about, isn't he? You're yeah. breaking up, Penny. You're breaking right, up on his. Yeah, your mic's cut. Hang on one second. Let's try this. Nope. It, He'll be back shortly, scary. ladies and gentlemen. Can you hear me oh, now? Just, just... Yeah. All right. We got you now. Yep, we can hear you. Yeah, I just reset the mic and cam to see if that would help. So get closer when... to the internet router. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's kind of weird because I don't I don't I'm not saying I don't trust video, but I feel like a lot of it can be explained away if you know what you're looking for. It, it, yeah. As paranormal investigators, we take ourselves and we put ourselves in environments that cannot be controlled. I mean, you got wind factors, you got age, you got just movement, general settling of the of the actual location. Yeah. So if you know what you're looking for, mm. a lot of the video stuff that you catch can be explained away. Uh, the only piece of video that I think I've ever caught in that I would consider to be credible yeah. would be yeah. at a private residence. So I can't really discuss, you know, the people or anything. Well, yeah, but, of course. Of course. But I, at a private residence, I caught a ladder that picked up and spun on its own. Okay. That's you can't really explain that. Oh, no. That's an unusual one. Well, oh, a windstorm, that. that's about all I can think of. Right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah it, it actually lifted up and it shifted and sat back down, back like it was standing right back up. So, what I did was I went back to the location and I tried to prove that it was not a trick of the camera maybe it was the lighting maybe it was the way i was moving or walking around the actual ladder i could not get this to recreate that's 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 just absolutely crazy dakota would you like to ask him the question you were going to ask him before his internet broke up, broke up? Or, or, let's see if the, the connection will let me so a lot of what you do on uh, when it comes to TikTok, is debunking a lot of the videos, which is something I honestly respect because way too many people take those too literally. What inspired you to start doing that? So it was it was kind of like a two-layer thing. Um, I originally started it on YouTube after watching an episode of Paranormal Caught on Camera, and I watched the episode and I was like, I could explain away three or four of these videos that these quote-unquote experts just said were paranormal. So. 
yeah. I made a quick YouTube video about one of them. It didn't really take off. I think to this day it has like nine views, something like that. Yeah. But I went to TikTok, and everyone was like, if you're going to do that kind of content, TikTok's the place to do it. So I went to TikTok, and I was scrolling through and seeing all these different videos. And I'm like, my God, these are horrible. People are believing these? Yeah. And so just randomly one day, my daughter says, well, Dad, if you can prove that they're not real, prove it. Break it down. Show them. And so yeah. that's what I started doing. That's – and uh, we – What's your name on TikTok so as all our lovely subscribers can go and get so a sub? So my name on TikTok is Static Voices. Uh, right. So ladies and gentlemen, kind of a... uh, the link is in the chat. Uh, Dakota's posted the link in the chat. Please go. I'm just going to click on it now and give you a wee subscribe while I'm here. I thought um, you already did, Christopher. All right. No, that was back. YouTube. That was that was his YouTube channel. That was his YouTube channel. I'm afraid. Yeah. So, really odd um, thing, I actually went closer to the router cut out. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. I don't know if it's maybe just the, the device I'm shooting it from, which it shouldn't be. It's a 13 Pro, so it's, it's an iPhone 13 Pro, so I shouldn't be having a problem there. Yeah. But, yeah, um, it's, yeah, it's Mr. iPhone over here. What, what do you mean? <laughs> I've, got, I've got an iPhone there. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with having an iPhone? See, that, see that's, that's the... That's, that's you you know what it is, Nate. He's a he's a Samsung owner. You know what it you is. What? He's an Android owner. I was until yeah. I until I had the iPhone 13 Pro. All I ever owned was Samsung, so I get it. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah. iPhone breaks too easy for me. So. Oh no! No, no, than you want. No, than you want. <laughs> that's why I have you Gorilla know? Glass on mine in a very sturdy case. See, yeah. see, see, I'm the same. See, I'm the same. I'm going to show you my case. I've got a life proof case in mine. Life proof, way to go. <laughs> life proof for our office, way to go. Especially if you have an iPhone. Yeah, and especially if you like doing ghost hunting at night and you're you're creeping about dark places and you might drop your phone. Oh, let me tell you, I had a uh, I had a Galaxy oh, what was it? Get, uh, Sky J Pro or something like that. I had bought yeah. it really quick because I broke my other one and I went to Walmart and they had one. I was like, okay, well I'm similar with the setup of this phone. I had the thing maybe two days and we were out doing an investigation and it fell out of my pocket and I kicked it and I had steel toed boots on. Oh, shattered the screen. Ooh. Oh, the poor Samsung, the poor little. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's really weird too because I have kicked EMF detectors across the room on accident and not had them break as quickly as that thing did. Well, that's actually a question I've just got for you. What's your favorite piece of ghost hunting technology out there? Uh, to be honest with you, as far as ghost hunting technology goes, um, you have to think about it in a more logical aspect. It, yeah. more, the quest, the, the way you, the way I would feel better, uh, I guess you could say, equipped to answer that question would be, which piece would I trust? Because yes. everything that we do is a pseudoscience. You can't take anything that we do, put it into a controlled environment, and recreate these circumstances to a perfect, repeatable response. So, mm -hmm. would I trust, say, a REM pod? You know what? I would trust a REM pod if a radio didn't set off the REM pod from 40 feet away. So yeah, I yeah. feel like there's multiple different aspects here. If, if I were to say that my, I had a favorite piece of equipment that I would like to use, it's typically my voice recorder because it's trusty. Yeah, I, I've had it since I started investigating. It's my original voice recorder. I love it. It's old, but it, it works great. That is the problem. There is a lot of technology out there, and Dakota probably agree. There is a lot of technology out there that looks good, but then again, it's like some apps. There's some certain apps that are out there that I don't trust one bit because it's, it's who's made them. And what's your thoughts on this, Dakota? Technology wise, there's so a lot of people actually, who put way too much faith in it. So on my YouTube, I actually test and uh, debunk paranormal applications as well. That's the main focus of my YouTube channel is I download and test paranormal applications. Um, I have found a few that I will say actually are decent. But then yeah. a majority of them, uh-uh. Um, like Digital Dowsing. Digital Dowsing is a great company. You know, it's run by Bill Chappell. Um, yeah. It's a, it's a great company. Digital Dowsing makes a few decent applications. The iObelis, I like it. It's a great, it's a great application. 
Mm -hmm. uh, there's another application simply titled Ghost Hunting Tools. I use that at Medfield State Asylum here in Medfield, Massachusetts, and I got yeah. six, six or eight, it was something along those lines, names that I was actually able to trace back from the application to the facility as far as people that worked there or people <clears> that <throat> died in the facility. Ooh. That's that's good. I mean, there's there's, there's obviously there's the ghost boxes apps that you can get, like the Necrophonic, the Necrophonic right? I actually thought that was great, and then I found out who made it, and then yeah. that totally changed. And then, and then I thought, oh no, oh no, it's him that's made. It. And then it just, I just turn it off my phone because then I, I couldn't really. And I kind of concur believe. with that. The first few times I used the Necrophonic, I thought it was great, and then uh, yeah. I don't know, just. I heard different things and I started looking deeper into the app as far as the design of the applications and stuff. And I was like, yeah, this, this isn't for me. No. It's, and you got people like, sure. you know, the guy, um, I don't know what his name is. I don't, I don't want to call anybody out, but uh, he does all those things where he contacts the dead. Uh, the guy from Huff Paranormal, whatever his name is. <laughs> yes, I guess I'm, you just said his name. <laughs> yeah. uh, I couldn't think of any, oh, yeah. what it is, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, there's a lot, there is a lot of frauds out there, and there's a lot of people that with technology. To, I mean, there's that Randonautica. Have you ever tried the Randonautica app? Uh, the Rand so I have it downloaded. Uh, I went to use right. it one time, and I was on the way to the location, and my phone died. So I assumed there was a reason I wasn't supposed to go there because my phone mm. had a half a battery, so it shouldn't have died. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah. Uh, Otherwise, in that, um, no, I've never used it. I have went online and watched a lot of those YouTube videos about people that use it and all the horror stories that they have and whatnot. But I, I kind of feel like a lot of those are just set up. Yeah, you know? it's it's clickbait. Yeah, it's it's, it's, it's literally it's there for views. Like a lot of people do with the paranormal stuff on TikTok. They're doing it for views. They don't care about how yeah. much it necessarily reflects on the field itself. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. So Dakota, you get any? Questions before the end of the show. We've got what about fifteen minutes left, or something like that. Uh, certainly never enough time. But honestly, well, hear me. What's your thoughts on this? With as much as UFOs are becoming less of a taboo subject and seen as the supernatural as a whole, is starting to be taken a little bit more serious. Say, like with incidents like Skinwalker Ranch being closer looked at by officials, things like that. What would be your best piece of advice to people who may just be freshly getting exposed to this type of thing? Okay, so if you're just getting into it, uh, the best piece of advice is research, research, research. Do your due diligence. Trust your instincts. Go to a location and if it feels off, you feel like, hey, I should be here. Don't stay. That's how you end up with a negative attachment in some form. I'm not going to say it's a demonic attachment because 16 years of investigating the. Yeah. So I'm not going to sit there and tell anybody. I'm not going to say it doesn't happen. But I have a few negative human scratch. They were able to buy this for You're kind of breaking up again. Eh, nah. Yeah, your mic. Nah. Your, 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 your mic's gone. Your mic's... That's weird that every time you start to talk about the UFO yeah, subjects, it just starts to go weird. I know. It's like, see, it was a second we ju I just briefly mentioned UFO. Not meaning to be directly at it, but just using it because that's what's going the on hint. in the world right now. It started to mess it up. The hint to yeah. it. Yeah. But that, yeah, do, my best... Yeah. My best advice to any... Nope. In hell... Ladies and gentlemen, this is what happens when you talk about UFO subjects. We should need to start calling them something else you know, and we start calling them turnips or something. Can you hear me now? Yes, we do. Let's, just, okay. let's no more see how long you we do. Aliens, nothing like that, right? Yeah, call them something else. Turnips or something yeah, like that. <laughs> but, but I will say, um, if I had to give advice to anybody, it would be trust your instincts, do your research, do your due diligence before you just head into a, yeah. a, head to any location. Your research is it's, going to be where it's at, you know, especially like when I do an investigation, I will go into a place and I sketch the location. I do my baseline readings and I sketch the location just in case there's any kind of hazards because you need to know what you're getting yourself into. Oh, yeah. I'm, have you, I mean, I know we've got much time left, but have you ever had any negative things follow you home? I have not. Um, I 
once again, it's one of those things where I take very, very, very strict precautions. I do grounding and centering before I go into an investigation. I do grounding and centering when I come home. So I, I do multiple different things to kind of help prevent it. Yeah. I, I was just I, I was just asking because I know a lot of people that do go ghost hunting and sometimes they like to bring back home a house guest. Oh, it does happen. I, I have encountered I have encountered times where people from my team have brought things home. It's just never happened to me personally. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 quite strange, and I can you imagine bringing home something. I mean, it's happened to you, Dakota, is it not? You've brought things home I've doing investigations. Brought stuff home because clients have said this thing is creepy. Get it the hell away from me. It's like, <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Oh, you know what? Actually, in my in my garage right over here, I have a creepy clown that was given to me. Ooh, <laughs> oh, no. 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 <laughs> no. That's from the chat who's probably cringing right now. Yeah, the girlfriend won't let it the creeps her out. Yeah, do you know something? There's a guy in the chat that is called Mike the Naked Bigfoot, and he would probably love that. I would love to get his collection. I can, I, yeah. I can tell you this. Uh, so when my girlfriend was out of town, I did bring the clown inside. Yeah. Um, we ran a few different application tests on it because I just wanted to see if it would react on it or whatever. So when I first picked up the clown, it fell out of the case and its foot broke. Mm. It's made of ceramic. The only three right. ones out of the hour and a half when we were testing it with this application, the ghost hunting tools, the only right. three words out were broken foot and sad. Oh, super glue. I tried super glue. It won't, it won't stay together. Will, will it not stay together? No. That's... So I think I'm going to uh, get some ceramic glue or maybe some epoxy. Epoxy, yeah. 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 The super glue does would, not hold. I... And it's it's an old doll, too. So I wouldn't personally have that anywhere near my house. I mean, I would, I would dig a hole and put it in it. <laughs> that that was that's cool. I've, I've had a possessed. Doll, what wasn't anything bad? It's just that it was a woman in her. They believed it was a woman in her thirties who passed away in a car accident that somehow got attached to this doll. It was like a personal item or something like that. <clears throat> they sent it to me because they knew I knew how to deal with this type of stuff. Every time I have it sitting on just like a bookshelf or something, just they said it takes a few days for it to start, you know, wanting to react. I, you know, I go to bed that night, not thinking anything of it. Next thing I know, that damn doll is in the bed with me. <laughs> and I was oh just like, God. whoa. Okay, that's not okay. Hi. I just, honestly, I think, see these haunted dolls and like Annabelle and all these haunted dolls? I think they should be put on an island somewhere and nuked. <laughs> well, think about an island of dolls down in Mexico there, Chris. It doesn't work out so well. That's that's very true. I think uh, he's froze again. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Damn Mike CIA! Stop clown. doing. It. What's that oh, in Mike, the chat? Mike, I've got a crazy clown. clown print that's haunted. Oh, you're just now sharing this with us, Mike. <laughs> oh my god! I, so, uh, uh, I, I mean, uh, clown, clown doesn't come in the house. Um, in my other yeah. storage shed over there, I have two Ouija boards that I got from clients that I, I keep <clears> in there. They don't come in the house either. Ooh. Right. That's interesting. That's I'm 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 actually wondering if it's all these haunted objects that's actually affecting your internet. Could be. Yeah. I don't know what's going on with this connection. Yeah, because you're talking about this stuff. I, I think it's all these haunted objects that's actually affecting your internet. Because I've oh, noticed you know, when Mike starts head talking head about that stuff, it goes weird. Yeah, because I do have some yeah. other stuff there that I brought home from locations too, and that's that does stay in the house. No, I I I, I can't touch haunted objects, especially dolls. No. I've, got, I've got a piece of like a three quarter inch thick glass from the Medfield State Asylum men's violent ward upstairs. Oh, now that would be interesting. Yeah, I uh, once again, I, I I have it in a box box that gets blessed once a month, so I don't I don't take it out if I if I can at all avoid it. We'll we'll actually need to get you back on the show again, uh, and you can show us all your collection. Wait, next yeah. time, yeah. yeah, 
next time. Maybe I won't be like rushing around all day and just getting home and having to join. I'll actually have time to sit inside and yeah. plan better. So everybody in the chat, could you please go to Nate's channel, YouTube, TikTok, and give it a big subscribe. I will soon. Um, and thank you for coming, Nate. Hey guys, I, I appreciate uh, I'm sorry yeah. about the issues, like I said, and I'm sorry that I'm running behind, bud. It's fine. Yeah, it's fine. But we'll arrange it. We'll arrange it for you to come back again sometime, and you can show us all these amazing things. Oh, I'd love yeah. to do that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And honestly, I hope you have a great weekend. I really do. I hope you have a really nice weekend. And are you going to a wedding after this or something? Is it a wedding you're going to? Uh, so I was actually already at the wedding. I'm going to go back, but I'm oh, right. because they had nothing there that I liked. <laughs> <laughs> oh my well i hope you enjoy the wedding i hope you enjoy it and thank you for coming and please everybody all the links will be below yes. and well, please uh, great yeah. time we'll I'll see y'all next time sounds good all right take care catch you later guys bye so dakota so dakota that was a very interesting guest i must admit oh yeah every now and then we we'll find a good one yeah. See, like at least they came in the last thing, you know. Uh, um, no. I know, I know. But the, but uh, so everybody in the chat, Mike, it's good to see you, my friend. Uh, Sherry, Doby, who have we all got in there? Because I've not really talked to the people in the chat tonight. Oh, we had yeah. Nigel Porter. He came by to say hello. We have Kelly yeah. Truce. Yes. Let's see, you know, Samantha Baker. We have a well, very we special have show tomorrow, right, tonight. Ah, we yes. Have a very... We have our dear friend Moonblade. That yes, we'll be getting time. we'll be getting into the subject of meditation, of your consciousness going into the stars. So that will be very interesting, won't it, Dakota? I mean, we'll it's be talking about many interesting people. That show. That's, I wonder, and it's weird every time you talk about this subject, this happens, you know. I mean, think of the guests that are coming to our show soon, that's going to be absolutely amazing. It's going oh, to open up things, you know. Good thing we're oh. Good. That's probably why he wanted to take some special precautions. Yeah. Why he didn't want to use our usual method. Now that I think about yeah. it. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, the guests. We've got a special guest coming up, guys. That's absolutely going to blow you all away. But I'll be kind of tell you who it is, obviously. One, not, one, not, just, not quite yet. Yeah, because but, the whole uh, month of October, we're going to have all sorts yeah. of fun stuff because the, it's going to be the bon first anniversary of the Bon Bonker Show. Yes, we first. we made it through a full fucking year. Yes, I know, I know, and look how the channels went. We're nearly we're we're nearly at two thousand subscribers. It's we're grown all the time. We we've gotten to meet we've gotten to meet personal heroes. I mean Yeah. Woo. I mean we've got we've got to meet Dave Schrader. If you're watching the new Dave, honestly, amazing we've got guy. To meet Dave Schrader, Barry Fitzgerald. Oh Barry Fitzgerald. I literally Barry started Fitzgerald. dancing in the middle of my workplace when I found out we were getting him. Ooh, also Dobby, go, Dobby also go. What about talking about regression sometime? Oh, Ooh, actually, that is we could get Lisa Fry on. Well, I, I, well, let's not just so let's not do a, keep this a small circle. I may have some individuals in mind who who are also deal with regression, you know. It's, yeah. You know, we don't want to just stay, you know, lovely so to death, don't get me wrong, but we don't want to necessarily stick with one small circle. We, don't, we want to make sure everybody feels included here. Yeah. Unless you I go mean, start drama. Then yeah, drama's no like, you know. <laughs> but, but I must say thanks to out there for all the amazing people I've got to meet. Dave Schrader, Barry Fitzgerald, Lisa Fry. Um, uh, Christina honestly, Gomez. Elena, uh, Christine, yes, Christina Elena Gomez. Denon, uh, Elena Denon. Denon. He's going to be coming back to promote his new book. I mean, who knows who will be on this show next? I mean, uh, it, no, it's no, mind-boggling. After, you know? after who we got for our anniversary? Yeah, I know. It's going to open I some mean, doors for us. 
Yeah, it's going. It's going. To, and 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 there's other there's always pe- famous people out there too. Hopefully soon. And there's Mike the Naked Bigfoot. He wants to meet Zach Bagans. See see Mike the Naked Bigfoot there, guys. He loves Zach Bagans. He's always going to run about him. Like, like, we already got you know something. Dobby screaming. No. Don't worry. You know Mike, Sherry would like us Mike, to get Zach Bagans to do a strip tease on yeah. the show. Oh yes. And she's always talking about that, ladies and gentlemen, how she wants Zach Bagans on. See, see, it's Mike there. He's always wanted to meet Zach Bagans, haven't you, Mike? Oh, I believe it's, yeah. it's like you know. I just want to just go and meet him, and I just want to tell him how much I love your your museum. You know, yeah. I bet Mike's sitting there like with his phone shaking. <laughs> <Like, laughs> <I'm only laughs> Mike's just like, Ugh. what's this oh, for? Me? Don't give me that. Fun. He's a bagan. Bunny. Oh. I am a Bagans, but oh, you know. God, how have we not this? gotten flagged yet? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but it's because we're, we're both handsome guys. Yeah, that uh, podcast, Dobby's, Dobby's wanting Jason Momoa. I don't, I don't know. I hear he's into that kind of, kind of thing, but. Eh. Another thing, too, ladies and gentlemen, please go and check us out in Amazon Prime and check us out on. Is it on Apple? iTunes, uh, Spreaker. Yeah. We have the Ball and Bonkers TV network. We have all oh, sorts yeah. of fun stuff. Plenty yeah. of places you can catch us. Yeah. And plus, like I said, the month of October, we're going to have all sorts of new surprises. Oh, God. Yeah. Just, just just so we made it a year. Yeah. I mean, a lot has happened this year. I mean, this year we've done an amazing job. It makes you wonder where we'll be next year. You know, I mean, oh, and 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 we're, and, we're, and, and uh, Dave Schrader's coming back again at Christmas, ladies and gentlemen. Oh yeah, he's coming back again yeah. to a show again, and who knows who might be with him? Um, who knows? You know? I don't. Know. Sherry's in there screaming. Nick, 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 Nick just had a baby not too long ago. That, that must be quite painful for him. I think they can make it up, babies. Oh God! <laughs> Moron. That's a joke. Oh my god, don't believe that. You moron. <laughs> oh my god. How the hell we managed to make class? I'm just saying to Dobby, she says we're doing fantastic. I know the YouTube isn't really seeing many views and stuff, guys, but oh, yeah. the, the podcast is exploding. It's it's getting out there. We've got we're getting to meet all these amazingly people, especially a lot of celebrities. That we're friends yeah. with on Facebook too, which is makes things better. Yeah, and you know, I will say this: a couple days ago, I do, I did put out a message in our group chat. Yeah. Basically, listen, there's probably going to be some changes coming up. Nothing bad, yeah. but I will say this: we are hitting such enough high profile that we have had to start talking and ranging around, dancing around fucking lawyers, which yes. As an eye, much of an eye crossing pain in the ass as it is, it is a sign that we have some very, very yeah. big stuff getting ready to come. Yeah, I mean, yeah, especially some of the celebrities. Oh, better control myself, I better not say none, you know. Well, we've, we've got, you've got to remember, we've got people watching us that don't really comment and they'll be getting, they'll be like, well, what, is, what are they talking about? Yeah, I know about? there's a couple people, and I, I know it's the same two people. I think that disliking our videos is going to hurt our feelings. It actually helps. Did you know that? Did oh, you yeah. know disliking a video actually helps you? It actually yeah, well, puts your videos out. You know? Yeah. Well, a lot of people don't realize is that when it comes to the dislike button, and this is with uh, Facebook, uh, YouTube, Twitter is starting to implement this as well. Yes. Because they want drama on all these platforms. Yeah. That the negative thumbs down, dislike, whatever, mm-hmm. actually has been shown by leak by the company leaks to give ten times more potency than yeah. positive yeah. remarks. I know. It's, um, it's they're actually doing us a favor, you know. Thank you guys. We love, we love you. you. But. It is going to be about time for us to go. Yes, I know. So, because we've got things to do. You know where to find us. Just Google. Yep. 
All the bunkers. We're everywhere. And I'll tell you what, guys. What we'll do as is tomorrow we've got is a uh, Moonblade coming on. Uh, I nearly said Slingblade there. You remember the film Slingblade? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Moonblade, com Moonblade coming on tomorrow, guys. And we might give you a clue who's coming on next month. <sighs> but two months away, you know. But we have to be, you know. Right. You know, there's there's a few people know. Dave Schrader already knows because he watches us. Oh stuff. yeah, he somebody knows. over here is playing gossip. I could. Girl. I, wanna, I, I had to ask his, his advice. You know, he asked his advice because he's yeah. interviewed them. Dude, you know, the, what we got going right now, yeah. somehow, it's fucking working. Yeah, I and know. don't worry, I'm Sherry. Sure. Nobody's getting fired or anything like that. Don't you, buddy. Just, just got to straighten a few things out. That's all. Yes. Think that you're, you still have your show, Smith Family. Whenever mm -hmm. they want to come back for intercourse, I know they mentioned it. They're more than welcome to. The doors yes. are open. Nobody's getting fired. We'll, have, just a, we'll have a meeting in a couple of weeks or something like that once Dakota's get settled in his new house and stuff like that. But big things are coming to Bald and Bonkers. Big things are coming, and very, very big celebrities are coming to this show, mm -hmm. which will change absolutely everything. Oh, and yeah. for the people that don't believe us, we were right about Dave Schrader, weren't we? <laughs> you know? But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I'll catch you all tomorrow night, you know? And I hope you all have Bye -bye. a great Saturday night. So, shall we play the trailer, Dakota? I think it's time we start... Yeah. Off we go. Yeah, I'm gonna go make perfect legality sorted because you gotta admit we did kind of go into the sloppy. We weren't yeah. exactly sure what we're doing, but there's some people helping us out, and everybody's yeah. gonna come out stronger in this. So yeah. Sherry, Plus don't worry. Okay. And no, we're not going naked, Mike, because only a couple platforms won't take us down. But let's play. Let's play. Yeah. play have the trailer play us out before we get too raunchy, yes. shall we? You